A win is a win. A win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. Well, first date in Chicago, and I got stood up. I still have not heard from this man. Is while I'm sitting at home, staring at the ceiling, just wishing that I had someone to talk to, is knowing that none of you idiots realize how lucky you are. Welcome back, guys, to another video of women hitting the wall. The wall. The wall. By the way guys, stay till the end if you want to see what makes bad boys so attractive to women and how to not be the nice guy anymore. I just got stood up for the first time ever. So I was supposed to be meeting up with this guy at a local bakery that I've really been wanting to go. For the first time guys, how many times have you been stood up? How many times have you been rejected? And he had the idea of going around town and eating a bunch of soft pretzels because on my hinge I have this fantastic prompt that answers the question if I choose the topic you start the conversation and my question is what is the best form of bread and he said pretzels only she thinks that's a good way to start the conversation only she or pretzel rolls and I was like oh you're the first person to ever say that so he suggested we do this pretzel tour he had a list of places he was like I will come up with a scoring system I was very excited so we confirmed yesterday, I texted him this morning before I left the house, I showed up, crickets. I got stood up last night, completely unexpected. I had been talking to this guy for a couple weeks, I was so excited. He was like, I'm free after five, and I was like, that's perfect. I'm okay, but why are you dressing in front of a camera? Online, for everybody to see. Free after five. So it's... Five. I'm in my cute little outfit already. Like, I knew it wasn't going to be exactly at five. But if guys say they're free at one time, it's going to be a couple hours later. Like, Can you see, guys? There are no rules for Chad. We all know. Fast forward. It is 7 p.m. I have not heard from him. Finally, I get a text. And he's coming over soon. And I'm like, great. Perfect. Okay. After that, I never heard anything again. At all. Nothing. So I was like... You know, maybe medical emergency, maybe something of happened. <laughs> um, but he still checked my Instagram story, so I got ghosted. Obviously, I could choose to be sad and focus on that, but I'm not gonna. It wasn't meant to be. Or, or, you can choose better next time, but you won't, you won't. The worst part is I thought I finally found, like, a nice guy. I was wrong. Slightly delusional and will believe anything anyone tells her. I just think it's kind of giving me like a red flag, like kind of turned off. Girls with espresso martinis. Uh, I'm gonna order an Uber, but uh, I don't have my card, so. For me, it would have been beer. If I see a woman drinking beer with me on a date, I'm gone. So, um, just sell me or something. We haven't even gotten our food though. I mean, uh, I'm not hungry anymore. Because I ordered an espresso martini? Yeah, I'm just really turned off. Thank you, come again. I got stood up by my sneaky link. <laughs> so this man does not live in LA. He lives in a different state and he hits me up. Hey, I'm in LA. Well, well, well. So we're texting whenever we decided to, we're gonna go to grab a drink at like happy hour. Okay, cool. This is his first time in LA. So I was like, I gotta give him the LA experience. I was like, we're gonna do a rooftop, give you the full grand scheme of LA, like let's do it right. And then he decides, he asked me, he was like, you know, can you actually do later? And I was like, annoying, but all right, cool. Like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, guys, Chad doesn't have to be punctual. Chad can delay the date. But you, you can't. He pushed it to later. As you can see, I'm like ready to leave, ready to get out the house. And I'm like, hey, are you still in the same area? Like, was going to suggest like a couple different places because obviously he's not from here. Let's get a nightcap. I'm like, yeah, cool, great. Then this man goes, don't be mad. You say that because you know I'm going to be mad. He said, don't be mad, but... I've been up since really early this morning and I have to get up early again tomorrow. Why did you text me? You texted me. You don't even live here. <laughs> He's with another woman. That's why. <laughs> he doesn't care about you. <laughs> You're an afterthought. You texted me that you were in LA because you wanted to see me. Then you don't even have the nerve to pull up. He proceeds to say, to be honest, I started dating this girl. And what did I tell you guys? <laughs> What did and I now I kind of feel a little guilty about it. Get 
get on ready with me after another failed date night in new york city with a guy who is definitely not my husband i'm literally so exhausted from being charming you might as well face the fact that you're going to be alone and stop pining away for some fantasy guy you're never going to get yeah this is like embarrassing as hell but honestly like i don't give a damn i feel okay. like i'm about to be stood up so um i have a date planned with this guy at six and it is 5 46 right now so i was already headed toward his area he doesn't really we don't text all day which is cool with me but like i facetimed him two times um like 15 minutes ago just like confirming because i'm on the way right now and i haven't heard from him i just had the worst first date of my life i figure i'm just gonna tell you what happened guys is it just me or does she look really really tired like i don't know some something with her eyes the the way that she looks and and then we're gonna try and work our way back from there my date invited myself along with two other women so that he could speed up the process of finding <laughs> his perfect three-way yeah guys when you're chad you can do stuff like this. <laughs> this guy on a dating app, and I feel like by all reasonable measures, he was pretty much just your average guy. We agreed to meet at this Italian restaurant that's about 15 minutes away from my house. So I show up in my Uber, and I'm probably like 10 minutes early because I'm usually, I just usually show up early to things. I don't know. When I get there, he's standing outside the restaurant and I recognize him from his profile. So at least he's not a catfish. He made a reservation, so the table was ready right when we got there. So at least that was nice. They bring us to our table and they seat us at this four top, which honestly isn't that weird if you think about it. We're really only sitting there for like maybe two minutes before this girl walks up, who I think at the time is just the waitress. But no, no. And you already know what's coming. She kind of just looks at me funny and then introduces herself just casually. And I'm like, oh, hi, like I'm Megan. And as she's sitting down, the next girl walks up. So all the girls are just introducing <laughs> each other. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? He's just sitting there like completely fucking fine. And then she goes, oh, so like, how do you know so-and-so? As in the guy, I'm just not gonna say his name because honestly, you know what? I should fucking say his name, Matthew. It was Matthew. And I'm like, oh, I actually don't really. This is our first date. So naturally, my next question is, oh, well, how do you know Matthew? He looks me dead in the eyes and goes, I thought this was our first date. Yeah. I just <laughs> Matthew doesn't give a shit. So I saw a girl say that no matter how gorgeous you are, dating the wrong guy will make you feel so ugly. And I am here to tell you that not only does it make you feel ugly, you do get uglier. All the stress, the cortisol, the lack of sleep, the constant crying, the slow degradation of your self-worth and self-care and the rise of your insecurities and poof, out the window goes your confidence. You're struggling and you're unhappy and everyone around If you're struggling and unhappy and it causes you stress, why are you with that guy? I don't get it. It's so stupid. You can tell except you but when you date the right guy girl that glow up you sleep at peace you're well fed you're filled with love you have the mind space to think about other things other than your relationship you have the energy to do your hair and makeup and dress cute you find the time to go explore new hobbies your nervous system is calm yeah guys this is why women after a certain age after they're done with their bad boy phase they see they can't get chad so they go for the nice guy, but they're not happy with him. And happy, and you are glowing from the inside out. The right guy will make you more beautiful. Isn't it obvious? My looks are starting to fade. So I am so over this dating thing. The bare minimum can't even be met, like courtesy, kindness, human decency. And I used to give three chances, and now I'm giving two. And you can guys like i don't get it like i'm just giving one <laughs> you gotta come correct or don't come at all it is not that hard but people make it hard or they're not serious do not come in my life to and be discourteous I, I, it, it can't happen i don't know i don't know what i don't know but i'm at my wits end this is crazy jesus christ there's one thing that men are never 
ever short on. It is freaking audacity. I mean, <laughs> here I am having to put caffeine solution and cold rollers on my eyes because I cried last night over a man who is 30 something years old, has Peter Pan syndrome, and tried to project his issues onto me about me wanting to date him. Um, no, sir, I hate to break it to you, there's a call sheet, and now you have been rotated out. I'm not doing that. I'm not here to raise you, tell you what to do, tell you how to act, son. You need to get it together. You need to get it together. This is some bullshit. This, you know, I will, ta I will take my, my part of the blame. I allow him to only communicate via Snapchat. I should have put my foot down. There was my red flag. There was my red flag. What did I tell you guys? People ignore the red flags. You have Snapchat. I've never had Snapchat in my life. That's only for kids. It's not for a 30 something year old man. What are you doing with Snapchat? Okay guys, it's time for me to answer a few questions. So nice slash good guys finish last. What are the traits these good guys need to change in order to become more exciting or more like the bad boys? I know one is to be willing to walk away. If she oversteps boundaries, walk away. This one I learned from being stupid and getting with a single mom. <laughs> but what other traits would you say to develop in order to not be the boring good guy? So what traits do the bad boys have that all women are attracted to them? Let me show you a video. Can you list off what those characteristics are? Absolutely. So the dark triad are three personality traits that are found in individuals. So you have Machiavellianism, which is typically described as sort of manipulation or the ability to manipulate. The second is narcissism. The third is psychopathy. So callousness, lying, thrill-seeking. It's said by psychologists that these three traits are quite negative. But for some reason, they're attractive to women. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Evil, so, but attractive. Yeah, very, very attractive. So these individuals, it's important to keep in mind that they're very low in neuroticism. They're very high in openness. They're very low in conscientiousness, very high in extroversion. Mm. Those characteristics on their own are pretty attractive. A narcissist smiles, speaks nicely, wears very nice clothes. So that in and of itself is pretty attractive to women, right? A, a person that is Machiavellian is very disagreeable. And what the statistics indicate is that an individual that is highly disagreeable, if they are below the mean level of disagreeability, they typically make 18.3% more in terms of yearly income. And that translates to about $9,722 per year. Wow. Okay, guys, so narcissism. I am a narcissist because I'm a YouTuber. I'm very, very disagreeable. Very disagreeable, as you can see, guys. <laughs> and also, many would say I'm, I have psychopathic tendencies. Why? Because I have a lack of empathy or remorse. But that's not true. I have empathy. I just don't have empathy for people. But for example, I would never hurt an animal. I have a dog. I have stray cats that are, all, are around my building that I feed regularly. Animals don't understand the concept of right or wrong, of making bad decisions. On the other hand, people know the difference between right and wrong. They decide if they're going to be good or bad. So everything that happens to them happens because of their decisions. So yes, I don't have empathy towards people. That's why you see I call people stupid. Okay, let's talk about the nice guy. So how does the nice guy act differently from the bad boy? Well, I can just tell you a phrase. Happy wife, happy life. So the nice guy will try to do everything for his wife, for his girlfriend. But she will never be happy and I'll tell you why. Because women usually, not all, but usually women choose the nice guy once they're over a certain age, once they, they, they see that the bad boys only smash them and they don't get in a relationship with them. When she can see that Chad is not going to commit to her, then she will pick the nice guy. 
just to not be alone. But she doesn't like the nice guy. So she makes the nice guy go through all these hoops just to be with her. And of course, the nice guy will do everything to make her happy. But she's not happy. She wants Chad. She doesn't want the nice guy. How do you set boundaries correctly? And how do you enforce them correctly? Well, you, you, you set your boundaries when you start dating. Don't you have conversation about what do you want from life? What do you want from this relationship? What are you looking for? And you just say what your boundaries are. If she tells you, yes, I want to be together, but I still want to go out with my girlfriends. I want to go to the club. I want to drink. I want to, to travel with my girlfriends. Then you just leave. But most people don't want to leave. Most people ignore the red flags. Most people, they set boundaries and then they fall in love with that girl. And then when that girl breaks the boundaries, he just lets everything slide. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's just one boundary. And then she will break another and another and another. And then you're wondering, why did she leave me? That's why. Because you didn't have the balls to be a man. Okay, next question. Currently, I'm out of the game for almost five years. Recently, I crossed a very cute girl and I didn't have the balls to ask her out. It surprised me. I didn't know that I was a coward. Any advice for how do I get my balls back? I've told you before, the only way to get good at asking women out, to get good at dating, to get good at reading between the lines, is to have experience. You have to go and ask women out over and over and over and over again. And then, even if you see a really hot woman that you really like, then you're not shy anymore. You're not afraid to go ask for her number. You need to do things over and over and over again to get experience. That's the only way to not be a coward. I don't know how, how you can get your balls back, my man. I, I don't know you. You should do some positive videos about the good girls. It would be very refreshing. Oh my God, guys. Come on. If I show you a video of a woman and she says something or she does something that I say it's not okay, it's not good. Well, if a woman does the opposite, that means it's good. Do I need to show you videos? Going out to the clubs and partying and drinking on light is a red flag. Okay, what's a green flag? Not doing that. It's so simple. How are people this stupid? Oh my God. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.